Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be solving equations using inequalities. All right. Now we are in section 6.3 and 6.4 in Math 9 with Mr. Waterman here. So so far we've looked at how to solve for a variable using reverse operations. Basically we undo an equation by using the opposite process. So positive and negative, multiply and divide, and so on. All right. So for example, um, we've done this in class already. We've got 7x minus 9.7 equals 21.8. And we've got two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you both ways. So first way is the algebraic way. Well, what do we have here? Well, we've got to get x by itself. So we're going to do the exact opposite of what's happening to x. We're going to add 9.7. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're going to add 9.7 over here. What this does is this goes to 0. And we're left with just 7x equals 21.8 plus 9.7 is going to be 31.5. Now, what is happening to x? Well, 7 times x, so the opposite of times is divide. We're going to divide by 7, divide by 7. 7 divided by 7, just like when we divide anything by itself, we get 1. And we're left with x. x equals 31.5 divided by 7 is 4.5. Now, another way to do this is the arrow diagram. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite our question, 7x minus 9.7 equals 21.8. And so what we're going to do is we ask ourselves what's happening to, to set x. So we put x in a little box here, and the first process that's happening to x is we're multiplying it by 7, and we get 7x. The next step that's happening is we're subtracting 9.7 from that. So we're going to subtract 9.7. And what do we get? Well, we get 7x minus 9.7. All right, and we get 21.8 out of that. Now we do the exact opposite. Well, what did we do? We, we subtracted 9.7, we have to add 9.7. And we get 31.5. And then we times by 7, so we have to do the exact opposite. We're going to divide by 7. And we get 4.5. All right, so we have the algebraic method and the arrow method. All right, so that's a quick review. Now, we've also looked at equations that have a variable on either side of the equal sign. All right, so it looks something like this. Um, we have 12x plus 7 equals 10 plus 6x. Now, we want to get x on one side and our constants on the other. So what do we need to do? So let's check this out. We're going to do the opposite of what the signs say. So we're going to subtract 7 from one side. We have to do it to the other, minus 7. Then we're going to rewrite what we have. We've got 12x equals, this went to 0, and we've got 10 minus 7 is 3, plus 6x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get x onto the other side so that we can, we can combine our like terms. So we're going to subtract 6x because that's the opposite of positive 6x. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. All right, these are going to go to 0, and we're left with 6x equals 3. Now, we've got 6x, 6 times something equals 3. Well, we've got to divide by 6, divide by 6 to get rid of that. This goes to 1, and we're left with x equals 3 over 6. And that if, if we reduce that, we get 1 over 2, which is just a half. All right, so... We can solve for a variable now from class, and we've seen that. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at inequalities. Inequalities represent situations that have a range of answers. All right, so let's write that down. Inequalities are equations with a range of answers. That's pretty cool. So there's an equation that, you know, has more than one answer. That's fantastic, all right? So inequalities, you guys have probably already seen this sign, the signs before. What we have is we have a little kind of like an L and this means less than. 
we have the opposite of that, which is greater than. And how I remember that is less than makes an L and greater than doesn't. We also have less than or equal to. And we also have greater than or equal to. Now I would put, you want to be writing all those things down. Now let's let's give put some examples here. If I w went x is less than 5, well that's every number less than 5. So if I wrote that on a number line, it would look like this. I've got 5 right here. Every number less than 5. And it's an open dot and we're going to put our arrow to the left. An open dot means that it's everything but 5, so it can be right up to 5, 4.999999, but it's not including 5, all right? So now let's make one for x is greater than 7. Well, what do we have then? Well, if we put that on a number line, if I put 7 there, it's everything that is greater than 7, not including 7, but 7.00001 would be included in that. Now, if we go less than or equal to, let's go x is less than or equal to 5, all right, and if we put a 5 in there, that includes 5, so we put a closed dot, and everything is less than or equal to 5. That's all our answers for that equation. And finally, if we put x is greater than or equal to 7, that means if we have a 7 here, it's going to be everything 7 and everything above. All right, those are the things that you need to be writing down on your sheet there. And finally, you'll notice that our goal is to make inequalities true. So what number solves for x is less than 5? Well, we could put a 4 in there, we could put a 3 in there, 0, and so on. Um, so our goal, our goal is to make inequalities true. All right, so let's try one x it minus 2 is l greater than 5. Well, what numbers would satisfy this equation? Well, we can solve this just like a, a problem, like an equation, and we're going to use the opposite operations. So we're going to go add 2, add 2, and x is greater than 7. So in this case, x has to be any number greater than 7. Now let's look at some patterns. All right. Um, we're going to go, and this is all going to be in a box here, 15 is greater than 5. That is true. Now let's add 2 to it. Add 2 to one side, add 2 to the other, and we've got 17 is greater than 7. That's still true. Okay, let's subtract 5, subtract 5, and we get 12 is greater than 2. That's true as well. All right? And, okay, let's do something else there. Let's divide it by 2 divided by 2, and we get 6 is greater than 1. Yeah, that's true as well. Now, 6 is greater than 1. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 6, and we get 36 is greater than 6. Yeah, that's still true. All right now, here comes the tricky process. We're going to divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Well, what do we get? A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So we're going to get negative 18 is greater than negative 3. Uh-oh. Negative 3 is not, I mean, negative 18 is not greater than negative 3. So what we're going to do, whenever we divide or multiply by a negative number, we switch our inequality. So check it out. We need to switch our sign. And check it out. Now it goes negative 18 is less than negative 3. And that is correct. Okay, so negative 18 is less than negative 3. That's correct. And now what we're going to do is we're going to times it by negative 3. 
and we get positive 54. And if we bring that sign down, it's still going to be less than, and oh, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Is 54 less than 9? No, it is not. So we need to switch our sign. So every time we multiply or divide by a negative number, we're going to switch our side. Okay, try these. Four x minus seven is greater than or equal to three. Okay, that's one you need to try and bring to class. And then one more is negative two x plus one is less than or equal to nine. Bring those to class. Watch this video and you guys will be laughing. Good luck.